What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a Remnant 2 video guide. Today, we're looking at builds. What is possible in Remnant 2? And how are you going to be creating and crafting these different builds? Remnant 2 has absolutely stepped it up by miles when it comes to build variation. There's so many different things that you can do, and the classes have added a lot to this as well. So let's get into it and see what's possible. First up, you have your primary class. This is going to be the first one you select at the beginning of the game. You can also change it whenever you like. So anytime you get a class, you can change your primary class to whatever you want. Do you want to be a medic? Do I want to be an explorer? Do I want to be a hunter? It does not matter. But the thing that does matter is whether or not this class is on the left or the right. See here, this one is a left. You get the prime perk. If your class is over here, you do not get the prime perk because this is the subclass. So for the pride perk, make sure that you like the one you have. That's going to be pretty important. These classes are going to upgrade as you level up. So you're going to start with only one skill, start with only one perk. You slowly upgrade them, slowly get points into your traits and fully level that. Once it's fully leveled, you get all the benefits and you can select different skills whenever you feel like and change that up. As far as the skills go for the second archetype, you're going to get not the main perk but you get everything else see this you don't get the main perk die hard that's only your prime but you have everything else you can use the healing you can use all of the perks and the the trade as well now what's really cool is that you get both skills at the same time so say i want to be very aggressive and use a heal i get both of those options so you get two skills at any given time because you have two classes very very fun love this uh it makes the builds just playing the game a lot more fun now, after that, we're going to have armor. Armor is not really that important as far as this video goes because it's basically for resistances and looks. Do you want to look good? Do you want to have a certain type of resistance? Say you're facing the root, they do bleed. Maybe you want to have armor that has really good resistance to bleed. That's really as far as that goes. I will say this, though. Weight is important because you don't want to be too heavy so that you can roll. And you can go in here to your advanced stats and actually check exactly how much your weight is. Right now, I'm medium normal dodge so you could check that as well as all of your other stats too just so you're aware next up we have the relic the relic itself has a lot of different variations you can get this one here that makes you take less damage this one here heals for a certain amount this one grants you more mod power this one grants you more healing over time if it is takes a while to heal and then this one here is really good for decent amount of healing and mod power regeneration you can find these throughout the world when you're doing the dungeons and they're usually more hidden than some of the other items. But it's really cool because they massively change how you're going to be playing. Especially if you're taking a healer, you can then go into something that doesn't use as much healing and instead does more mods. Now, on top of the relic, you're also going to see these things right here. These are going to be things you can change in your relic, right? So you go in here and you get three of them at any given time. They're called relic fragments. Relic fragments can be upgraded and you will get increases to them. You can get a relic fragment right here. You can see it does not have a plus number next to it. This one has a plus two, meaning it's better than its previous version. There's a whole bunch of stats that come with these, like extra stamina, reduced stamina cost, uh, increased fire rate. There's all kinds of stuff with these. And you can select them on a variety of relics to just completely change up how you want to improve your character. What's really nice and that you do need to know is that this merchant over here, you can actually upgrade relics. So if we go in here talk to her right here you can upgrade any of these relics it seems to choose a random one but when you do it it requires relic dust it will say at the bottom left use relic dust and it's going to upgrade one of those relics upgrade to ordinary stamina plus two upgrade upgrade to skill cooldown is now a plus three instead of a plus two so these are going to take your relics that you already had sort of a like gambling you don't really know what it's going to increase but it's going to increase one of these and make it a little bit better for you. Now, of course, we have the weapons. Weapons were always a huge part of Remnant and definitely in Remnant 2. You're going to have boss weapons that have a mod already equipped on them. These cannot be taken off, and they are often very, very powerful. You also have a couple different weapons, especially the ones you start with, that can be... You can place any mod that you like on here. Any of the mods that you buy, you can put any of them on. So this lets you take a boss fight and be like okay this boss sucks because my minions can't hit him very well so instead of using say the space crabs yeah they're space crabs they're really awesome 
you can use something like Fargazer, which attacks at any range. You can attack any boss. These are really awesome. They were probably the highlight of the first game and definitely going to be the highlight here as well. Um, I would highly recommend you take one of these guns here, one that can have any mod on it and upgrade it quite a bit because they're very, very versatile. But some of the boss weapons can be extremely high DPS. You just got to find the right one. The other thing is that you're going to have mutators. So if you see all of my weapons, they have this little brick kind of engram thing on here. These are mutators. Mutators are very, very important. I overlooked them on my first playthrough, but on my second, I'm telling you, they were game changing. So this one right here on hit grants a 22% chance to return spent ammo directly into the magazine. And it's been upgraded to a plus six. Your rifle can have a mutator. Your melee weapon can have a mutator and your pistol. So all three of them get a different mutator and they can do a variety of things. What is very important to note is if you go back into this pan merchant over here, you can upgrade your relics or your mutators. You're going to need Corrupted Luminite, which drops from Aberrations. They're like bosses that can spawn in the dungeons and worlds. And you're going to use those to upgrade these. So, for example, it's a 22% chance to happen right now. It's going to go to a plus 7 and become a 24% chance. These are extremely, extremely powerful and will really make your build stand out way more than it ever could. And they're definitely going to be something you want to look into. I'm... To show you exactly how powerful this is, this weapon right here, we're going to look at the mutator. I already talked about it. It gives a 22% chance to return spent ammo directly into magazine. So if we go over here to the shooting range and you notice I'm going to fire. Watch my bullets at the bottom right. That's 10, 9, 8. Goes back up to 9. See that? 8, 7, 6, 5. Back up to 6. I'm getting ammo directly into my magazine. And it lets you fire a lot more bullets. Especially if you're using something like an automatic gun. That'd be really, really cool. Next up, we're going to have our amulets. Amulets are really the main part of this whole side over here. You're going to select something that you want your rings to base off of. So for a melee-based build, I have this one. Spending at least a certain amount of firearm magazine is going to increase melee damage. So then I can set up my rings to be like, okay, I want health back when I melee. I want extra melee damage. I want even more melee damage, and I want to deal bleed when I melee. Now, if you are using a different amulet, like say this one, standing still is going to increase fire rate reload speed. Then you can go over here to your rings and be like, all right, well, what's going to buff that amulet and my weapon that I'm pairing with it? Probably something that increases range damage, right? So I go with this one, dealing weak spot damage increases weak spot damage by 10% for 7 seconds. And that'll, you're going to want to pair your amulet and your rings up together. Especially now that there's four rings, all of them are going to have less stats than they would have in the first game. But when paired together, they're going to be very, very powerful. One other thing I want to note, my face cam's covering up part of this, is the traits over here. You can see these. You do not have access to infinite number of traits now. Okay? So you'll see I have two trait points. If I put them into expertise like I had them... I am now out of trait points. 60 is the total. You cannot earn any more trait points than that, so it's very important to select the exact traits that you want. These are passives. Some of them come from your class, like Strongback comes from Challenger. Triage comes from the Medic. But these other ones are going to be earned through dungeons, like Handling and Siphoner. Siphoner is really good, by the way. I'd highly recommend it. And all this other stuff. The one that's going to be XP gain is really important for leveling up your classes. But after that... You should be able to respec and then get those out of there because that's not going to help you after that point. So traits are really important, but beware that you can't have them all. In the first game, you had... I don't even remember how many there were, but you could just keep playing and earn all of them. That's not how it works now. More things that I want to make sure you know about are some of the merchants are going to be how you get your other classes. So say the medic, if you talk to certain people, you can go into their shop. Skip their dialogue. Go into their shop. There'll be an icon, like a health icon or something in here. You buy that from these different merchants. Then you're going to go all the way over there to the dock. That guy up in there. You can actually buy the kind of upgrade the icon using money and luminite crystals to buy your other class so if you're interested in getting your other class early on you need to get some materials but then you can purchase that and it'll really help you out also merchants have consumables in the first game this was awful as they were spread out throughout the world and you had to have the money to buy them when you found them 
Now, most of the consumables are found at these merchants. Stuff like reduces stamina consumption, um, increasing mod power. How about increasing fire rate? All of this stuff can really help you out. I will say this. If you're having trouble with ammo, buy ammo boxes from this person right here. Ammo is a huge problem for certain builds because you're just not... Some of the builds, like Hunter, right. we look at the passive from Take Hunter. Care, if I can find it. We go into Hunter. He gets more ammo. Firearms gain 15% reload speed and movement speed. Uh, you can get extra ammo drops from weak spot. Hand Hunter never has any issues with ammo whatsoever. But when I mained Challenger and Healer, I had huge ammo problems. So be aware that if you're running a class that's not going to get a huge ammo benefit, you may want to just come over here and buy like a buttload of ammo boxes. The final tip that I can give you is before you go out and you actually play with your build, be sure to come over here and test your build. You can actually see how much DPS you're doing. You can see how much you've done total. What the change is from body shots to head shots. And you can use your skills to increase this stuff as well. And just test it before you actually use it out in the game. Which is really helpful, trust me. You can test your melee builds as well. All kinds of stuff. So be sure to make take advantage of the shooting range. Very, very valuable. And that's pretty much all we have for you guys today. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to change things up. And the classes are really interesting as they have all kinds of different pairings that go well together. You've got mods that are going to be absolutely huge. Like this one here. Let's just check this out. End of the video, we'll just check this out. This mod here, this gun only gets 10 bullets, right? If I hold this down, it doesn't... It's not full auto. If I press my mod, boom. Infinite ammo and full auto. This is easily one of the best guns that I've found so far. And I got it from one of the more interesting bosses as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of what weapons can do. All kinds of cool stuff in here. Hopefully that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Gave you some sort of a direction to head in and an idea of what you can do. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.